Hey everyone, this is Alex from warnoffkeys.com, and welcome to episode two of my Minecraft plugin development series. If you haven't watched the first video already, we set up our project and our server there, so a link to that we found in the description or at the top right of your screen now. In this video, we're gonna actually start listening to our own events and get our plugins live and tested on our own server. But before we move forward, the user Bliff has commented on my last video that we can add in this flag right here to our script to start up our server, and that's going to help us bypass the 20 second delay. I didn't actually know about this, so thanks to them for leaving that comment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paste it in right here, and now the entire new script that you can use to start up your server can be found in the description, so you can easily copy and paste the whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this, and now let's go into IntelliJ, and let's go ahead and set up our first listener, and to do this, I'm going to create a new class. So inside of our main project here, I'm going to right click, go to new, Java class, and I'm going to name this hello world, because typically when learning a new language, hello world will be the first thing you try and print to the screen. So now that we have this, we're wanting to set up our own listeners in here so we can listen for certain events that we fired whenever the user does something. For example, when a user joins the server, the player join event is fired. Whenever the player places a block, the block place event is fired, and that's actually what we'll be listening to within this video. So the first thing we need to do whenever any class wants to listen for something is that class has to implement listener. And the listener has to come from org.bucket.event. And this will allow us to actually listen for things. But this alone is not enough because whenever our code is actually running, for example, on, on enable, we have to actually tell our server that we want to listen for events within that class file. To do this is very simple. We can say bucket.git plugin manager dot register events. And the first argument passed in will be the actual instance of the listener. So because our class implements listener, we can pass in a new instance of the hello world class. So we can simply just say new hello world. And this will call the constructor. So if you did have a constructor here, note that that will be called because of course we are making a new instance here. Now afterwards, we want to tell it which Java plugin this should be registered to. So because we're inside our main class, which extends Java plugin, we can just simply pass in this. So now all of the events within this class will be registered and actually listens to whenever our plugin starts up. But of course, we don't have any events yet. So let's go ahead and write one. We have to specify each event with the at event handler annotation. This will tell Bucket whenever it's looking through all the methods of this class that we're looking to actually listen to an event here. So afterwards, we can create a simple method, public void on block place. And then the parameter here is going to be block place event. And I like to name my events event, just because I'm not a huge fan of single letter variable names such as E, but you will often see E or something else to represent the event name. I prefer to spend an extra nanosecond to type out the full name, just because it makes everything easier to read. So now whenever this line right here is ran, it's going to look through all the methods within the hello world class. It will look for all the methods that have the event handler annotation, and then it will look at the parameters. It will then understand that we're looking to listen for the block place event here. So this method will be invoked every time a player places a block. Now the name of your method here doesn't actually matter. For example, I can name this test or anything else and it won't actually matter because the name of the parameter block place event must be spelled exactly like this. Obviously we're even importing it here. So the spelling is very important here, but I like to name my events whatever they actually represent that we're listening to. So in this case, I would name it on block place, but you can technically name your methods whatever you want. So now what happens? Well, the goal I want here is whenever the player places down a torch anywhere, it will say hello world in the chat. So we have access to this event argument right here. And let's go ahead and see what we have access to with that. So if I do events dot, we now have a bunch of options. We can get the block. We can get the block is placed against. We can get the player, the item in the hand. We can see a bunch of stuff here. And if we wanted to, most events are gonna have a set canceled, but we can actually cancel that event. So let's say we check for some logic to see if they can or can't build in a certain area. And we decide that they can't build here. We can set cancel to true. And that'll make it so the block isn't actually placed. But of course, we're not looking to do that here. We just wanna to check to see what type of block they placed. So I can say event.getBlock. And now we have access to a block object as we see that this returns right here. So if I press dot again, we can get the X, Y, 
and Z integers for that block. If we want to get the location, we can get the world, we can get the type, which it returns a material value. So this is actually what we want to do here. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say material type equals this. So now what actually is this type? Well, there's a type for basically every type of block there is. There's one for torch, one for grass, one for dirt. Any type of blocks there are, there'll be a type for. And so we can now use a simple if statement and say if the type is exactly equal to material dot. And here we have a bunch of options. We could say grass. We could say torch. We could say almost any block you want to actually check for. So if they actually place down a torch, we can now do something with that. First, let's gain access to the actual player. And as we saw earlier, we can do that with event.getPlayer. And this returns a player object. Let's go ahead and say player, player equals event.getPlayer. And again, you're noticing that I'm actually typing out player here instead of just specifying P. That's because the word player only takes a half a second more to type and it's much more clear what this is because in other portions of the code, I might be importing a plugin or something else that starts with the letter P. So I highly encourage you to keep your code clean by making sure you don't use single letter variable names, which I often see in the Minecraft plugin development community. But moving on, we now have access to a player object. And what can we do with that? Well, like the other things, we could type out player and use a period. And now we see a bunch of options. We see send message at the top for me. We can scroll down, we can get display name, get exhaustion, get experience, get fly speed. There's a plenty of things we could do here. We could set their food level, we can set their health. There's plenty of things we could do. Right now, we're just looking to send a message, which simply just takes in a string, and I'm going to say, hello world. So this is all we need for this block place event. So now we're ready to actually test out our new Minecraft plugin and all the changes we've made. And if you watched the last video, we compiled the plugin and then copied it manually into our plugins folder. Well, that's going to get kind of tedious because we have to do that for each individual change we make. So the easiest solution to this is to actually have our plugin compile into our plugins folder. Now, it's important to note that your server should be shut down before you actually compile. So the workflow would be you write your code, you shut down your server, you compile, you start your server back up again, and you test the changes. So instead of the jar going here, whenever we compile, it will go directly into our plugins folder. So to do this, we can click on the gear at the top right, and we can go to project structure. Alternatively, you can click on the shortcut here, but I'm just going to click this. And here under artifacts, we see output directory. So I'm going to click on this folder to browse. And here we see my main Minecraft series folder, which has project and server. So if I open up server, I can now click on plugins and select the plugins folder and not plugin metrics. So click on plugins, and then click on OK. Now, if I minimize this, I can click on apply and OK. Now, let's make sure this actually works. So going into my folder, I'm going to go into plugins and I'm going to delete this file right here. That way, if there is a file there, we know that it worked correctly. I can now go to build, build artifacts, and then build. We see it's building at the bottom right here. And now that it's done, we go over here, we now see project.jar. So now we can go ahead and start up our server. I can just simply say sh start.sh. And we skip the 20 second delay here because of the extra flag we added to the start. So now that our server has started up, we even see hello world here from our actual plugin. We can now connect to that server. We can do a direct connection and type in localhost, but I prefer to add it to my server list. So I'll click on add server. The server address is just simply localhost. We can click on done. And if you click on the server, you can hold shift and use your arrow keys to move it up and down the server list. I'm going to move it to the top and then we can go ahead and double click on it or just click on join server. So we see that we've joined here. And one thing you want to make sure is that you op yourself. So you can go ahead and op yourself right there. This will give you access to all of the commands. So we can go ahead and give ourselves a torch. So slash give, type in your name, and you can press tab to autocomplete it, and then torch. So my user now has a torch. I can go ahead and place this, and it says hello world in the chat. That's because of our plugin. If I were to place any other block, such as this piece of dirt, nothing actually happens because it's not technically a torch. 